President of the General Assembly, Your Royal Highness, Princess Dr. El Hashmi, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, it is a pleasure to address you all today on the occasion of the first United Nations International Day of Women and Girls in Science. I sincerely thank you, Your Royal Highness, Dr. El Hashmi, for your kind invitation to be a part of this conference. The observance of this day provides an occasion to come together to champion and promote the need for more participation of women and girls in different areas of science and technology. Let this day also offer a space in which we may consider how best to make access to equitable opportunities in both education and employment, a reality for women and girls around the globe. I am proud of Malta's role in proposing this resolution and I celebrate the commitment of Member States to achieving gender equality for women and girls in science. The pursuit of intersectional gender equality is central to the vision of my presidency and the work of my foundation for the well-being of society. Being a champion for the United Nations He for She campaign, I have initiated a national initiative to bring awareness to the role that men and boys must play as active agents in the struggle for equality. This International Day of Women and Girls in Science presents us with an opportunity to consider that role more deeply, to explore what must be done in light of the worrying marginalization of women and girls in one of the most rapidly expanding sectors of study and research. Data released by the European Commission shows that within the European Union, women continue to be vastly underrepresented in top positions within the higher education sector. The proportion of women in positions of influence varies widely across countries, ranging from 4 to 5 to 11 percent. Statistics from other regions of the world fare no better and in some cases simply do not exist. The need for a more comprehensive and global perspective on the participation of women across academic, professional and executive spheres of influence and decision making within the sciences and beyond remains of paramount importance. Even the OECD, in its publication entitled Women in Scientific Careers, Unleashing the Potential, clearly states, and I quote, Women have made important contributions to research and innovation in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development countries, but their potential remains untapped. Although in recent years, women's participation in science has increased, according to data issued by the UNESCO Institute of Statistics, the global average for the share of female researchers in 2013 was still only 28.4%. There are also disparities among the regions of the world, reflecting that socio-cultural unpinning are at play in this regard. In my own country, where great strides have been made towards the realization of more inclusive and equitable communities, we are still reminded at times of situations where lack of respect and concern are still felt towards women and girls. I truly believe that on a global level, we must interrogate and transform behavioral, social and cultural barriers to the participation of women and girls, which are embedded in our traditions, policy processes and practices. As we all know, the dismantling of such barriers is not only of benefit to girls and women, but has positive impact throughout communities and on society at large. We all appreciate that creating knowledge and understanding through science will influence the economic, social and environmental challenges we face today. Definitely, this cannot be done without the contribution of half of the world's population. Concurrently, we must honor the achievements of women and seriously consider the difficult choices they are forced to make in societies that are still not directed towards full inclusion and at every level of activity. Unfortunately, according to statistics by UNESCO, 
60% of countries have not yet reached gender parity in education, not even in, in the early years through primary and secondary education. On the other hand, while some countries are experiencing an increase in women achieving tertiary education levels, there is still disparity in the continuation of their professional careers. Even now, stereotypes persist in career choices, which are still being shaped by familial, social expectations and the mass media through the way it perpetuates the social construction of science. A national consultation held in Malta by my foundation on last year's Women's Day identified the difficulty of achieving a work and life balance as a leading hindrance to the well-being of women in Malta. Women activists, academics, practitioners and professionals spoke about the need for workplaces that adapt to the entirety of a person's lived experience rather than the imposition of a male-dominated framework on the career paths open to women and girls. It is alarming to realize that women and girls continue to suffer exclusion from full and equitable participation in science-based studies and employment. Even worse are women and girls living with disability. According to data published by UNESCO in 2010, it is estimated that only 1% of women with disability are literate. It is therefore not surprising that they are often considered to be a burden and their potential overlooked and hence excluded. The fact is that most women are still largely undervalued in key areas of research and development. However, our, our efforts must also be mindful of the fact that women who do overcome substantial barriers to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, mathematics and related fields earn on average more than women in other occupations. Nevertheless, reports also indicate that they still experience a lower wage when compared to their male counterparts. This observance should serve to impress upon our global leaders and policymakers that the increased participation of women and girls in science is not only immensely valuable to the world, as more scientists and researchers come to contribute their creativity to complex questions of crucial importance, but also is necessary in the lives and futures of women and girls themselves, to their families, to their communities, and to their nations. Parallel to this, on a global level, we must continue to find ways of encouraging and supporting women and girls throughout their studies and as they enter the workforce. I must take the opportunity to acknowledge the initiatives taken by UNESCO in promoting and encouraging women and girls in scientific endeavors and awarding efforts of successful women in, in, in science. On this subject matter, we must also be guided by universal mandate of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Our ultimate goals will only materialize and will only prove fruitful when women are able to freely access opportunities to enter and excel in our areas of science and technology. If we are to achieve these ambitions, member states must actively pursue their commitment to these goals. It is not enough to simply dedicate resources to strategies of information gathering or initiate platforms for discussion. While these initiatives have their place, they cannot serve as a substitute for effective and long-term actions that address the problem at its core. We must frankly acknowledge gender issues throughout research and development, addressing the untapped potential of women and girls across disciplines and professions. It is necessary to increase the visibility of appropriate role models in positions of leadership and to promote the work of women in science, thereby encouraging girls to enter the sciences as a lifetime profession. It is our duty to create significant vehicles for action that support ever greater numbers of women who use science and technology to tackle combined global challenges and maximize opportunities for institutional change. Girls must see women being valued 
for their insight and celebrated for their contributions, acknowledged as colleagues and co-creators in the great work of which we are all stakeholders in issues of environmental sustainability, of technology development and addressing the root causes of conflict and violence across the globe. We must provide encouragement and gender-sensitive, inclusive education in which girls can thrive if we are to unlock the tremendous and as yet undervalued potential of women. May this International Day of Women and Girls in Science provide an effective contribution to the attainment of our goals. Ultimately, it is only by our actions, by our sustained commitment to achieving this global transformation that we may seriously hope to enhance the quality of life of millions of women and to nurture the well-being of every human being. From my end, together with my foundation for the well-being of society, we look forward to learning about the proceedings of this conference and to remain engaged in the process. I wish you all a very successful conference. Thank you.